Hi everyone, Roy Gallitz here, and today I'm going to talk to you about the gap between the three companies, Sony, Canon, and Nikon. So, is Nikon actually opening up a gap from Sony and Canon? That's a great question. So today we have three camera companies ruling the camera photography world, and these are Canon, Nikon, and Sony. Sony has recently joined the fight just a couple of years ago and they quite vividly opened up a gap especially when it comes to mirrorless cameras. So Canon and Nikon had to respond. How did they do that? They both closed the gap within the mirrorless cameras and launched their very own mirrorless camera line. And of course we see recently the top three cameras. The Sony Alpha 1, the Canon R3 and R5, and the, uh, the Nikon Z9. When Sony launched their new Alpha line, and especially the Alpha 1, uh, they quite they, they made Canon and Nikon quite nervous. And this is why Canon and Nikon had to respond with an early announcement, development announcement, of the Z9 and the R3 a while back, way before they were officially announced. That's the re and the reason for that is they wanted to keep the professional photographers on hold not to abandon ship and go to Sony. So Canon has introduced the R3 and Nikon has introduced the Z9. Both are really great cameras and all three of the top cameras introduced the stacked CMOS sensor which allows us to take photos without viewfinder and screen blackout while keeping focus continuously going through. And no one argues that all three cameras are amazing in quality. But still, top of the line are the Sony Alpha 1 and the Nikon Z9. Both introduced great quality and resolution while keeping really high speed. The R3 is a great camera, but it's half the resolution from the Sony and the Nikon. It's like taking the R3 and the R5 and putting them in one camera and then you get the Z9. In my opinion, the Z9 is a better camera when it comes to body, usability and the feel that I get as a professional photographer who uses this camera. And of course, not to mention the focus uh, system which is so intuitive, fast and I think that's a game changer. That being said, I do believe that photographers have a greater weight in the quality of images than the cameras. So great cameras, the newest cameras, do help us to make that our work so much easier in keeping the subject in focus and getting greater frame rate and selecting the right image out of the bunch. Uh, but still, don't forget that a great photographer has created amazing photos even with cameras 10 years ago. And if you take a pretty bad photographer and even give them the top of the line today, they will still get quite miserable photos. I mean, the cameras are a tool and the photographer is the most important part. And the camera's job is to make our job easier. But the gap that I'm talking about is not necessarily the bodies. I mean, we've talked about the bodies, but it's not necessarily the bodies, but it's the optical quality of the lenses. And that's where I think that Nikon is really opening up a gap from the other two companies. So Nikon is notorious for its lenses optical qualities and I've been testing pre-production models for the last five years for Nikon and I can tell you that every time they, they send me a new lens my mind is blown by the sci-fi characteristics of those lenses and when they come out uh, a few months or a year after and I see that in the field and now we're taking it for granted. I just, I always try to remember how I felt when I held that lens and used it for the first time. I still remember when I used the Nikon 500mm f5.6 PF in Kamchatka in 2018 and I had, I held this lens for the first time. This is a 500mm lens 
and and I still remember how I felt like when I took photos of it with it uh, uh, and compared it to the 500 f4 lens and actually I even posted a comparison field review in deeper review which you can read about it I'll put a link in the comments below and just this lens that weighs under 1.5 kilograms it's it's uh, it's like something for the from the future and I've had photographer colleagues of mine who have switched to Nikon just to get a hold of this lens which is so usable and lightweight and frankly cheaper and when you compare it to the 500 f4 you get the same optical quality but you do lose one stop of light and I tested a bunch of other lenses as well in uh, just last October I've uh, used the new Nikon 400mm Z lens f 2.8 with a built-in teleconverter in Kenya in the Masai Mara and I was the official wildlife photographer that tested this lens for Nikon and they've used my images uh, across the world uh, all over the world for the, uh, the the end result of this lens and I used it with the Z9 and I had to shoot RAW and JPEG so all the images that you've seen in Nikon's official advertisement were taken from a JPEG file just to show you the image without any editing straight out of the camera not cropping not, no white balance nothing just straight out of the camera so you can see really what the optical quality is all about and again my, my, my mind was blown I mean also Canon and Sony have a 400 millimeter f 2.8 lens that weighs under three kilograms but Nikon's lens does the same plus it has a built-in 1.4 teleconverter and you get amazing quality both in 400 f 2.8 and also in 560 millimeter at f4 and that's also another game changer so you kind of get two lenses in one and I'm sure you've seen my review of the 402.8 and I'm posting a link right up here and now I've been playing around with the new 800 millimeter Z lens f 6.3 PF and here it is uh, I hope you can see that in the frame so and here it is so here it is and it's a great lens, uh, it's a brilliant lens, it's super light, I don't know if you can uh, make sense of that, but it's super light, it weighs 2.3, ah, sorry about that, it weighs 2.3 kilograms, and with the Z9, they are an amazing combination, I've been trying it out just from my home with a 1.4 .4 teleconverter and times 2 teleconverter I also posted some stories on my Instagram account and I'm very impressed now I have been using the older 800mm 5, f5.6 lens in Svalbard and that lens was more than twice the, the weight it cost uh, I think sixteen thousand dollars, and the new one is around six and a half grand. And uh, it and and it, I don't see any difference in image quality so far. But again, I'm gonna test it thoroughly in the field, and I still uh, uh, can't believe that this lens is so much and so much lighter and so much cheaper than the other one. So while the Sony Alpha One and the Canon R3 and the Nikon Z9 are tremendous bodies with fast autofocus, fast reaction, higher frame rate, amazing image quality and that's and uh, arguably I think that the Z9 is better but again that's arguably and again everybody compares them and it's not day and night the difference I mean there are subtleties there are differences but uh, there are all great cameras um, but when it comes to the optical quality that's where Nikon has really opened up a gap from Canon and Sony and I don't think there is any dispute that the unique selling point of Nikon is their lenses and I can tell you that I even heard a bunch of other photographer friends of mine who have been using the Sony system or the Canon system uh, that they want to sell their gear and switch to Nikon because the price level and ease of access and the quality of the lenses 
worth making the switch. So imagine you can sell a $16,000 lens for 10,000 and even get a, uh, th then even buy the, the new uh, 800 millimeter uh, PF and you still have change to buy the Z9, which costs uh, way cheaper than the R3. So again, this is a whole new game that I think that Nikon is really opening, in, opening up a gap. So what do you think? Which camera system are you using? And do you think that it's worth switching from Canon and, and Sony to Nikon for these new lenses and price points? Please tell me in the comments below and I promise to read each and every comment and I'll try to respond to each and every one of them. And if you'd like to watch my field review of the new 800mm f6.3 PF lens, I can tell you that I'm gonna test it while photographing polar bears next week. So if you wanna watch that, uh, please remember to subscribe and turn off the notifications button. If you like this video, please give, them, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, that's okay to give it a thumbs down. I hope you did like it. And again, please stay in touch. Watch my other videos if you wanna learn more about wildlife photography. And I'll see you soon.